of identifying solutions of a system of linear equations and it gives you you see that little big squiggly right mm -hmm. that's just like a grouping mechanism to tell you that this problem involves both of those equations so in the past we've always only had one equation right now you have two or you could have three or four or however many but if those two together are part of your problem they usually use those little braces to put them together okay so basically I have to find an X value and a Y value that not just makes this part equal five, but it also makes this part equal as well, okay? So it's basically you have to find one answer that works for both equations, okay? Sometimes it's impossible to do that, and sometimes they're actually always equal, okay? So there's different kinds of answers you can get, which we'll get to those in eventually. But for now, they just give you four points and they want to know, do these four points, are they solutions to that system? Okay? And so just like you would do before, when you would check to see if it was a solution to this equation, you would plug them in, right? You put negative seven for X, you'd plug negative eight for Y, and then you'd see if it actually equals five, right? So those together are 21, these together are 16, is 21 minus 16 equal to 5? Yes. Yeah. So it does satisfy the top equation, but in order to satisfy the system, it has to satisfy both equations. So that means I also have to plug them into here. So the y value is negative 8, the x value is negative 7, and then I have to minus 4. So when I do this computation, I get negative 35 minus 4, and is that equivalent? Where do you get 35 at? Or that's probably not right. No, that's eight times seven is fifty-six. <laughs> yeah. Negative. I wasn't trying to correct you, ma'am. No, oh, you need to. Okay, that's yeah. good. Okay, no, no, that's good. You gotta catch me. I won't be like those other teachers. I'm like, I was just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> no. I tell you, the more calculus you learn, the less arithmetic you remember. Good. But either way, in whether it was a 35 or a 56, yeah. is this stuff going to equal negative 8? No. No, no it's going to be a giant negative yeah, number, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is not equal. No then that means this is a no. This is not a solution to the system. Oh, because so, you're going to satisfy both, both of okay. them. Okay. Yes. No solution. Okay. So, yeah. Be careful. Don't say no solution. You're going to say this is not a solution just for that first just set of, that one just point for that set, for first set of points. right that doesn't mean there isn't one at all it just right. means just, that guy's not it okay okay so then let's try this one let's plug in one for x and four for y and see if we get five here i get negative three here i get eight is that equal to five uh yes ma'am Yes. No. So now we try it in the other one. Um, be careful though. Y is equal to 4 and then X is equal to 1. So if I multiply that, I get 8 minus 4. Is that true? No. Is 8 minus 4 equal oh, to yes. 4? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. So we're, we're going to try to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Trying it in the bottom one now. Trying it in the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it helps, like put a little line there, right? All right. Copy that. Okay. But this one did work, right, for both? Yep. So we say yes. It is a solution to the system. Okay? So not just one, it works for both. Now let's try the next one. So negative 3. X is also negative 3. Plus 2 times the Y value, 5, equal to 5. If I multiply these, I get positive 9 plus and 10. positive 10. Is that going to equal 5? No. No. So I don't even need to try the other one, right? Because it immediately is a no. It has to be a yes for both in order for me to say yes. So I don't even have to continue. It's just going to be no for that one. Now the last one, let's see what we get when we plug in these numbers. So negative 3 times 0 for x plus 2 times negative 4 for y equal to 5. Here I get 0, here I get negative 8. Is that going to equal negative, or I'm sorry, is that going to equal 5? Uh, 
Do you, is this a true statement? Is zero minus eight equal to five? No. no. Nope. It's okay. not a true it's statement. Right. So again, I don't have to keep going with the next one because it's already no. Okay? But that's all you're doing is you're plugging both points into both equations and seeing if, if it works. Okay? It has to work in both in order for you to click yes. Okay? So that's what Alex is going to ask you. You're mm -hmm. going to plug it in and, and he's going to ask you no. To click yes or no. No for that first one. Mm -hmm. okay. See, look what it looks like on the screen. Oh, okay. He's going to have you. Okay. So it gives you all the points and you just click yes or no and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna go. Oh gosh, this one I really can't. Let me pause the video because you can't do this on the video. So, those are really the three different cases. They cross one place, give them the coordinates, they don't cross at all, so the answer is no solution, or they're one line on top of the other. And in that case, there's infinitely many solutions, but only on that line. So you, later, you'll have to give them the equation of that line. But let's go ahead and figure out how do you solve the problem. Oh, this one's graphically. So I'm going to need graph paper. I'm going to go on the next page in order to do this problem. So let me write down the title graphically solving a system of linear equations and then let me write the system okay and then again if you graph both of the lines right and they don't ever touch, then you're gonna click on no solution. If you graph both of the lines and it happens to be the exact same line, then you're gonna click on infinitely many solutions. But the other option, which happens a little bit more often for us, um, is if they actually do cross at a particular point. So in Alex, you're gonna have to graph these. So in order for me to graph them, I usually like to get this to look like, mm -hmm. Right, and then I can graph it easier, right? So then if I do that, I'm going to add x to both sides. And just so that I have a b, I'm going to go ahead and keep that 0 there. Because if I don't, I'm just not going to have a b, right? right? Then we divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So I actually get this guy's coefficient times x. You got it. And then what's 0 divided by 3? 0. 0. So in the computer, it's a little bit easier to graph them because all you need is one point here, the y-intercept, and then one more point according to this. So I would rise up 1 and then move over 3. And so then you need that second point. And then immediately from there, Alex will draw it for you, right? If you just click on the line. Um, dang it of all days for me not to have a little card. Normally I have a little card. Oh, I have a credit card. <laughs> okay. So we'll draw that, right? Then you got to draw the other one. This one's already ready to go, right? So you go up one for that y-intercept. And then you go from there, you're going to go up one and then over one, two, three. And so then I draw that one. And I think I didn't draw that one correctly. Yeah, I didn't draw it correctly. There we go. Yours is easier because Alex will draw it for you, so you don't have to worry about being so precise because Alex will draw it precisely for you. But for me, I have to make sure it's precise, otherwise my graphs are going to cross and they shouldn't be crossing. 
And how do I know that they shouldn't be crossing? Like, I knew that, and I'm telling you that, but how would you know that they're not supposed to be crossing? Uh -huh. They have the same slope, don't they? Which means they should be parallel. So when I noticed my lines were off a little bit, I'm like, wait a minute, this is not right. In the computer, you're not going to have a problem because you're going to put those dots and it's going to draw the lines and it, you're going to see the parallel. But for me, I know I made an error in my lines <laughs> when they're not turning out to look like parallel lines. Okay? They still don't. Don't they still look like they're kind of getting closer to each other over here? But it's just because that's my human error. <laughs> okay? But these actually should never be touching. And if they're never touching, what am I going to tell them is my answer? No solution. Correct. Yeah. No solution. Good. I want to try a different one just because I know they're not all going to be no solutions, right? So this one was one example. We'll do a second example. Um, these should be good. So y equals one third x plus one and then negative 2x plus y equal to negative 4. So now we've got this system here. Okay, so the first one's ready to go. I can go up one unit and put my y-intercept and then go up one more and then cross over one, two, three units. So I'll come here. And then that should be enough to draw it. Then for the other one, that one's not ready to go. So I have to add 2x to both sides. So then I get y by itself, positive y, and then positive 2x and a negative 4. So that means 1, 2, 3, 4 is my y-intercept. And then from there, remember this is a fraction, you can go up 2 and over 1. Good. And so then if I draw that, I'm trying to draw it. It should go through that dot. I just didn't draw it correctly. Again, this is my human error, right? Because I'm not the computer. <laughs> but what does the solution look like do yeah, they cross yeah, yeah that's one 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 solution what, i forgot what did you say it was one main solution one uh, unique one solution uni yeah, uh -huh. one unique solution for that and what is it what is that one unique solution uh you've got uh x is three mm -hmm. and then y is positive two yep you got it good Is Alex going to ask you for the one unique solution, or is it the unique solution is just the coordinates? It's going gonna, it's gonna to ask you for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to give you three options. No solution. It's going to have the little coordinates with little boxes in them. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to have the infinitely many solutions with another box. Okay. okay. So let me see another one. Mm, yeah, this one. Okay. So let me go in the back here. So same directions, but oops. But now we have this system. So the top one is ready to graph. top one I will go up one to get the y-intercept and then the slope I will go down one and over three so I will get here the bottom one is not ready to graph so if I add x and add x we get negative 3y positive x minus 3. Then if I divide by negative 3, remember the little coefficient there, right? 
negative one third x. What's a negative one. and a negative? Plus one. Plus one. Isn't that the exact same equation as the other one? Yep, so they should be parallel. Mm -hmm. You don't need to draw it twice. The computer won't even recognize if you drew it twice, okay? So it's the same spots here, the same line there, no matter what, okay? So here, you would click on infinitely many solutions, and then when it gives you that box, what are you typing in that box? You're gonna type that equation that they both are equal to y equals negative one-third x plus one, okay? You could have also typed the other version of that equation, but normally I type in this version. Okay, let's see another topic. Oh, now we keep talking, so. Solving a system of linear equations using substitution now. So here's the system. I'll give it to you in a second. Okay, good. Um, where is it? There we go. So there's my system. So they don't want me to graph them and solve them that way. Okay? They want me to solve them using a different technique. And the technique they want me to use is called substitution. Now, in order to use substitution, the first thing you have to do is pick an equation, then pick a variable, and isolate that variable in that equation. Then the next thing you do is actually substitute this expression into the other equation. There's no sense in plugging it into itself, right? So make sure you're putting it into the other equation and then solve. And then the last thing you do is plug in your solution into equation from step one. Okay, and that'll give you the X and the Y. Now, the first thing it tells you is pick an equation and pick a variable. If you want to save yourself some work, you need to figure out one, somebody's already isolated, and two, if nobody is isolated, who would be easiest to isolate? Just to save yourself work, okay? And to avoid fractions sometimes, okay? So in this particular system, do I already have somebody that's already solved for, already isolated by himself? Because you got Y by itself. On the top one, right? Yeah. So one step one's already been done for me. I don't even have to do it, it's already been done. I have one equation with one variable already isolated. So that's nice, the half the hard part's done, okay? The next thing I have to do is substitute that result into the other equation. So if y equals this expression, then instead of writing y down here, I'm going to use this expression. So if I rewrite the second equation, I'm gonna write 3x plus two and use that expression that y is apparently equivalent to. So since y is equal to 2x plus 11, right here, I'm gonna plug in 2x plus 11. 
And then now this is just the regular equation that y'all were doing in 410, right? First thing you gotta do is distribute to get rid of those parentheses. So I now have 4x plus 22. Combine your like terms. I gotta combine these guys because they're on the same side. Then start solving, minus 22. I get negative 28, divide by seven. I get x equals negative four. So I've done step one was done for me. Step two, I just finished. I actually did two and three, right? I plugged it in. This was step three. This was step one. This was step two. Solving it, I'm now done with step three. Step four says to plug this solution into the equation from step one. So since step one was already done for me, I'm gonna come over here and plug this solution into that equation. Now I know what x is, don't I? Yep. So if I plug that in, x is negative four, that will help me to figure out what y is. So you get negative eight plus 11, well, y is apparently equal to three. So your answer though, Remember, your answer is the point where the two graphs touch, right? So you have to write your answer as a point. Which number goes here in that spot? Negative four. Correct, the x value. And then the y value would go in the y value spot, right? So those three steps. Now I wanna do some more of them because this one had step one done for us, right? I want, we want to see what happens when step one is not done for us. So let me write down this equation here. So now we're solving this one, same thing, substitution, but notice here there is no variable all by itself. You've got x's and y's on one side at the top, they even have numbers in front, and then you have x's and y's at the bottom, and some of them have numbers in front. Don't even pick the equation just yet. Just look at all of the variable coefficients. Who is going to be the easiest to isolate? The, the one at the bottom. Which one at the bottom? The x minus three y. Uh -huh. But for which variable? Which variable is gonna be the easiest to get by itself? Uh, x. Mm -hmm. Plus three y on, uh, the bottom on both sides. If you're looking at the equations and you're trying to figure out who's gonna be the easiest, look for the guy who has a coefficient of positive one. If there's a guy in there that has a coefficient of positive one, he is the easiest to solve for. And if you have more than one person with a positive one coefficient, then just pick, okay? It really doesn't matter, just pick. So yes, this guy is the guy that's the easiest for me to get by himself. So this is the guy I'm gonna use for step one. Bottom equation, x, right? How do I get that guy by himself? What'd you say to do? Add plus three. Mm-hmm. Correct. And then now I used the bottom to find this step one, didn't I? Which means I need to plug that expression into the top, the top equation. equation. So instead of x here, we're going to use this expression. So when I come over here, I'm gonna write three, but now I'm not multiplying it by x, now I'm multiplying it by what x is equivalent to. Three, four, 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 four. Mm -hmm. Then you rewrite the rest of the equation, still the same. And then you solve this guy. Just again, same techniques as you were doing to solve equations before. Now you know why they were changing the letters on you all the time, right? Because the letters will change. So I get 9y minus 30, 4y. If I put my like terms together, 
I get 13y. Minus 30. Mm -hmm. Minus 19, 34. Then I add 30. Mm -hmm. Divide. So you got y minus 2. Yep. And then the last step is to take that 2 and plug it back Nine into step 1. Yep. So that goes here in my work for step 1. So I'm going to write x equals, and instead of y, I know what y is now. I know that y is 2. So I get x equal to 6 minus 10, which means x equals negative 4. So what is my answer, though? Uh, your x is going to be negative 4, and your y is going to be 2. Exactly. Don't forget to put your answer in its point form, unless the computer literally says this. Okay, if they tell you that, well, then you don't need to put it in point form, right? You just tell them what you got for X and what you got for Y. But just pay attention if they have this or they just have a big giant blank. Or if they have a blank like this. You can kind of tell if you look at the explanation. So look, if I look at the explanation, see, look how it wants it. It wants X equals and it has a blank. And then y equals has a blank. You see that up there? So, and then at the explanations, if you look down at the answers, they usually tell you there too. I don't know why it's not letting me go to the bottom. Oh, there it is. Why doesn't this one have an answer? That's so weird. It does, but it's not letting me see it. Oh, there it is. See? X equals this, y equals that. So pay attention to how they want the answer. Okay. Um, let me see if there's another one. Show another. I don't want the explanations though anymore. Here, do I need to do step one or is it already done? Do you have a variable that's already by himself? You do. So you already have step one done. Let's look at another one. Here you have X already by itself, right? Let's keep looking. There you do too. There you do too. That one's... <laughs> They're all by themselves already now. That one is too. Oh, there we go. Who would be the easiest one to get... I'm not going to do the problem, but just think. Who would be the easiest one to get by themselves here? Uh-huh, y in the top equation. What's y his coefficient? Y. Oh, because of the 1. You're it's a positive 1, one. yes. One. It's got a positive 1 coefficient, so he's the easiest to get by himself. Okay? I mean, you could do it the hard way and have fractions if you wanted to, but I wouldn't. <laughs> it is possible to do it if you don't pick the most convenient guy. It is still possible to find the answer. Okay. Now that we've got that method down, that's a great method, but it's not my favorite, just being honest, okay? Um, using the elimination method is my favorite. So let me write down the title first. Solving a system of linear equations using elimination with addition. Okay. Let me go back to the camera. There we go. So this is another topic. Now notice it's a different method. It is not the same method as the substitution. It is a different method. It is called elimination method. And if I've ever had you, or not, not had you before because this is like else first semester, but if I ever have you for college algebra or calculus or anything above pre-calc, calculus or anything above calculus 
this is my default method. This is the one I do. I don't usually do substitution, okay? The idea here is you want to cancel a variable because you can't solve equations when there's two different variables. You can only solve equations when there's just one letter in the whole thing, okay? So that's what I want to do is I want to cancel them. The only way to cancel terms is if both of them are exactly the same but have different signs, right? Because five minus five is nothing, right? Negative five plus five is nothing, okay? So you wanna make a variable match in value but have opposite signs. Now I am going to do this one in two different ways because you can choose which variable to do that to but sometimes one is easier than the other. Okay. But I don't want you to get hung up if it's too much, if it's too concerning on which one's easier, then don't freaking worry about it, right? <laughs> Just do it with whoever, okay? You don't have to worry about who's easier, who's not, okay? The only one that's easier here would be Y. And that's because, don't they already match in value? Yes, ma'am. They just don't have opposite signs, right? Well, if I want to make one of them have opposite signs, the easiest thing to do is just to multiply everybody by a negative one, right? Then that'll change this guy's sign and that guy's sign and that guy's sign. But it still keeps the equation equivalent because I'm doing it to everybody, okay? What you do to one side of the equation, you're doing to the other side of the equation, right? So then that equation becomes negative 4x, a negative 5y, and now a negative 10. And I'm going to rewrite the second one underneath because it's already um, same values but opposite signs. Okay. So here I'm eliminating y. Okay. Now it says with addition. So what you're doing with these two equations is you're adding them or combining them together. So what is negative 4x plus 8x? 4x. 4x. What is negative 5y plus 5y? Zero. Zero goes away, right? They cancel each other out. They eliminate each other, right? Hence the title. What about negative 10 plus 30? It's 20, positive 20. 20. And then I can solve that for x now, right? Because there's only just one letter. Yep, x equals 5. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with that 5? You plug it back into any one of those equations because this answer is supposed to satisfy both of them anyway, right? So it doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pick the top one before I started messing with it. So 4 times 5 plus 5y equal to 10. So I pick the top equation before I started changing signs and everything, okay? Then I get 20 plus 5y equals 10. Then I get 5y equals negative 10. And then I get y equals negative 2. So the answer here is 5 for x and negative 2 for y. Let me check real quick on how they want the answer. Okay, they still want it x equals 5 and y equals negative 2. So they're not asking for it in a point form. I think they're all going to have answers right now, so far. Because remember, we still have two other possibilities where you can have no answer, right? So it can just happen. But I do want to do this problem differently. What if someone chose to eliminate x? Okay. It doesn't matter which one you eliminate. But what if I didn't recognize that the y was easier to eliminate? Right? Mm -hmm. I just didn't see it. I didn't recognize it. You can still eliminate x. 
the easiest, I mean, they say you can use the least common multiple and all that stuff, just like you could use the least common denominator to do things, right? But I always tell you it doesn't matter if it's the least. Everything will reduce out later anyway, right? So I don't need to have the least number. The easiest way I do these is if I take the original, I'm just rewriting it because I'm going to scribble all over it. And I already scribbled it over it over here in pink. The easiest way to do it is if I want to eliminate x, take that guy's coefficient and put it here. And then take that guy's coefficient and put it there. Because you're multiplying the same two numbers together, right? Aren't the numbers going to now match? The only thing is, is that they're both going to end up positive if I do this, right? So you need to have one of them positive and one of them negative. So just make one of those numbers negative. Pick one. Do you want to make the 8 negative here, or do you want to make the 4 negative there? Right there. The 4? Okay. You said it first. <laughs> so then now let's distribute everything out and see what we get. So there and there we get 32x. Here and here we get positive 40y. And here and here we get 80. For the bottom, we're going to get negative 32x. Here and here we're going to get negative 20y. And then negative 4 and 30 will be negative 120. So we add the big things together, right? 32 and negative 32 are going to cancel out. Here I'm going to end up with 20y. And here I'm going to end up with negative 40. Divide by 20. Negative 2. Negative 2. Isn't that the same y value I got over there? Yep. Yeah. And if you plug it back in into any equation, it doesn't matter. I usually pick the top one. Just no reason in particular. So I'm picking the top equation again, the original, and just plugging in the y value I found. And so when I compute this, I get the same x value of 5. Okay? So it really doesn't matter who you get rid of, right? Just as long as you make those numbers match and they have opposite signs, they will eliminate and you will be able to come up with the correct answer, okay? And if you can't think of what number they should be, just use the other one, okay? If you're getting rid of x's, use that number here, use that number there, and then if they're already opposites, do you need to put a negative in there? No, because they already cancel each other, right? It's only if they have the same sign originally that you have to throw in an opposite, okay? There's nothing different there, it's the same thing. Ah, oh, this one's interesting, we'll do this one. So I'm going to flip it over, solving the following, or no, solving a system of equations with fractional coefficients. This is actually the same thing. The only thing different here is you have like a pre-step. And that pre-step is to turn these equations into equations like the ones you saw on the previous example. In the previous example, there were no fractions, were there? So we just need to basically get rid of the fractions and then it'll be a system like the ones we're used to, okay? So how do we get rid of fractions? We multiply by the common denominator, right? Here, the only two denominators I have are five and two. Ten. So I'm gonna do 10. So I'm gonna take 10 and multiply it by every single term. When I do that, this is going to become negative 5x, this is going to become positive 2y, and 120. 
And if you're not sure, you could always use your calculator, right? 10 times a negative 1 half, and it'll tell you it's negative 5, right? 10 times positive 1 fifth, it'll tell you it's positive 2. What about here? What denominators do I have? I have this guy and this guy, right? It's the same, so do I need to multiply them together? No. No, we could just use 4. So then do it to everybody, right? You're going to get 8x. Then you're going to get 1x positive. Or I'm sorry, not 1x, 1y. And then 4 times this is going to give you negative 3. Now this looks like what we were doing before, right? So you need to figure out who you want to eliminate and then go and do the work for it. Now, who do you want to eliminate? It doesn't matter. You just pick and then run with it, okay? Let's go with the 8x. You want to get rid of the x's? Yeah. Okay. So then that means I'll need to multiply this one by an 8 by 5. Do I need the negative? You. Or will they already be opposite signs? For x's. We're trying to get rid of x's. They're already opposite signs, right? Isn't this one negative and that yeah. one's positive? Yeah. So don't throw in another negative because then they're both going to be negative, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you got to make whatever number that you're multiplying by has got to be the opposite. They got to be the opposite, okay, but the same that. the same number. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you yeah. don't want to put a negative down here, otherwise it's going to turn them both negative, right? right? So you got to, so I'm going to write that a note to myself. So, we multiply. so then let's see. Y. Oh gosh, 8 times 120, it's a big number, 960, positive 40x, positive 5y, and then negative 15. And then we combine them. So those will wipe out. Let me see, 960 minus 15. And then if I divide by 21... I get 45. What do we do with the 45? Because we don't have x. What do you mean what do you do with the 45? Mm -hmm. I have oh, to have gotta two parts, back, right? You gotta plug it back into your right. equation. Do you really want to plug it back into one of these guys? No, no. Plug no. it into one of well, the pink no, ones, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So let's see. Negative 5x plus 2 times the 45 equal to 120. Let's see what we get there. Negative six. And so now you have your two answers, right? You have negative six for X and you have 45 for Y. Okay? So it's not much different from the other one. You just kind of have to do a pre-step by getting rid of the fractions first and then do it the same. Okay? I'm trying to get to the good stuff over here. Decimal coefficients. Do you know how to get rid of decimals? We'll do one just so you can have it. But it's the same thing as fractions. You just want to get rid of those decimals before you keep going. So I might not do this one all the way just because I want to get to the word problems and stuff. But I'll show you how to get rid of at least the decimals. Because then it turns it into things you already have been doing. What you have to do here, and the words that I choose are kind of weird, tricky when it comes to decimals. You have to pick 
you have to identify which decimal has the lowest place value. And what that means is which one has more decimal numbers in it, decimal parts, right? This only has one decimal place value. This one has one decimal place value. This one has no decimal place values, right? This one has one, one, and none. So the most, the highest number of decimal place values I have is just one, right? But if I had had a number like 0 0.02, right? Then that's two decimal place values, and I have to go with that one, okay? It has the most place values, but really it's the least placed value. It, so it sounds so weird, because this is tenths and then this is hundredths, and hundredths are smaller than tenths, right? So it's really the smallest value, but it has the higher decimal spots, okay? So you identify first how many decimal places you have to use. Since my low, my I only have one, 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 I'm only gonna use the one space value, okay? To get rid of it, all I need is to multiply by a factor of 10. And since I only need to get rid of one decimal place, I only need to have a one zero in my number for 10. So here, I would only need to multiply by 10 and by 10. If I was trying to get rid of the decimal place here, I have two spots, right? So I would have to use 100 to get rid of that one. So that's going to okay. go for if you had 0 0.002. Yes, go then I would, 1,000. However many place values there are, that's how many zeros you need, okay? And you just got to multiply everybody by that. So when I do that, this is going to become um, 2x, this is going to become 14y, and this is actually going to become 90. And then for the bottom, I will get 8x, negative 4y, and then negative 60. Now I'm not going to solve the equation, but you would do the same exact thing as before. Make, pick either x or y and make the numbers match, but have opposite sides, okay? I mean, I can set it up, but I'm not going to actually finish it. So I could take this one and multiply it by 8, this one, multiply it by 2, but they're the same, so somebody's got to be negative, okay? And then you could keep going with that. Mm -hmm. That's just the mechanical part of it after that, right? But I really want to get to these word problems. Oh, I need to do this first. What we haven't run into, all these things have had answers. What we haven't run into is what happens when it has no answer, no solution, or what happens when I get um, infinitely many solutions, right? We have not run into that situation yet. Every problem that we've solved, we've been able to find out what X is and find out what Y is. So these are the beginning of what happens when you have different situations. Now let me dun 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 no and unique show another mm. Oh it doesn't ask you. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the video. So we've got three different equations here, and I picked them so that I could get each one of these situations, okay? So if I look at the first group, okay, remember the, the method. Make them match in number, but have opposite signs. These guys already match in number, don't they? So I just need to make them opposite signs. So you pick one of them to put the negatives in. Which one, the top or the bottom? Top. Okay, so if I put in the negative, it's gonna turn this to a negative, this is gonna turn to a negative, and that's gonna turn to a negative, right? 
Now I could add them already right away. Negative 2x and x is going to cancel. Negative 5y and 5y are going to cancel. And negative 8 and 7, I get negative 1. What do you have on the left-hand side? You have to write something down. Uh, but if they both cancel, then what do you have on the left-hand side? Zero. Mm -hmm. This represents nothing left on that side, right? Is that true? I can't keep going. I can't say, oh, well, y equals this and x equals that because they're, they're missing, right? Is this true or not? Zero can't equal one. Zero does not equal negative one. So this negative is false. One, and that means that there's no solution for this one. So you need to see how would you know if something had no solution? Well, if all the letters go away and this is false, then it would be no solution. Okay. I want to skip over to this one real quick. Because notice these already have the same number and they already have opposite signs, right? So I could just combine them right away. And if I do that, these are going to cancel out, these are going to cancel out, and these are going to cancel out. So what do I have on the left side? Zero. And what do I have on the right side? Zero. Zero. This is not false. This is true, isn't it? Is zero, zero does one. equal zero, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the case when you have infinitely many solutions. How can you say that when everything is at zero, though? So where is your infinite? What it means is it doesn't matter what x is and it doesn't matter what y is. This side will always equal that side oh, okay. for both of those equations. What, 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 and honestly, what that means is that this line and this line are exactly the same. Because mm -hmm. yeah. look at if I change all the signs, don't I get at the top? Yeah. Right? Exactly. So they are exactly the same line. And that's all that is saying is it's the exact same line. Okay. For this one, we're going to do it the same. Who could we get rid of? You can get rid of us. We could get rid of Y, why? but one of to be negative though right yeah. if we make this one negative we have to make that guy negative too right. so then we'll combine them those go away so I have nothing but what do I have on this side 4x 4x and I can keep solving for x divide by 4 divide by 4 my variables didn't go away so I do have an answer 0 and then I could plug that 0 into any equation I'm going to plug it into the top and I get zero, which means my answer is a point and the x coordinate is zero and the y coordinate is zero. So these two lines actually cross at the origin. Okay, so that's different than these. Notice here there's no letters left, no letters left. This one still has a zero, but there are still letters left, right? And that's important because I don't want you to see a zero and then go, oh, it's no solution or, oh, it's whatever. You know what I mean? If there's still letters, you have to keep solving. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop this video and I'll do another one in a second.